but the fact the fact is if you do the things that you're supposed to do all the time things work out and and this chapter three intrigued me from the title it says don't listen to your wants and don't want it it is more profound than I thought it was going to be after I let read into it. Cause I thought, well, if I don't know what I want, da, 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 if I don't, you know, but the way we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but there's one thing that it starts at, which I am absolutely horrible. All you guys have had conversations with me one-on-one -on -one, and I'm sure you know that I believe that I can multitask with anybody in any conversation all the time. <laughs> And my brain's going all over the place. My wife is a man. You know, I love to use my wife as examples. I swear to goodness, on the radio, off the radio, every person she met felt like they were the most important person in the world. Because when she was talking to them, eye contact, engaged, questions to lead them further down the road, she was present in every single conversation that's a talent you know it's a talent when you interview people you can't already be thinking of your next question uh oh well, what did i watch the other day wayne's world wayne's world too and they're talking to a, a radio guy and the radio guy just keeps going uh-huh sure that sounds great uh-huh sure so that sounds great and wayne was going you're not with listening to you us at all uh huh. Sure, that sounds great. And they just kept going on. It is, but he takes it a step further. Not only should you be present in every conversation, you need to be present in every single thing you do. Now, if you give me a computer, I'm very present. <laughs> uh, no matter what the task is. But how many of you seriously? You know, that's what the first thing I got out of this book is trying to be present in conversation and action. Does anybody get something that meant? How would you expand on it? How would you say that kind of affected me and I could see myself doing blank? Cheryl, pick up the microphone. I am not doing these books for business. I'm doing them just for growth, you know. But if I grow, then my business grows. So everything goes over to business and being present in a conversation is a skill. And I realize that I have started forming a habit of I'm looking at you. You think I'm listening to you, but I'm thinking about, well, I'll do the laundry tomorrow and then the puppies will go, you know, I'm thinking of something else. And we have heard it before. Who was the young dude that was one of the first books we did um, talking about interviewing people and being really present in that interview? And uh -huh. I mean, people can tell. They can tell. And even moving that a step beyond, I have that. Well, first off, one thing Cheryl said, what she does in her personal life affects business. What I found here years ago was agents that weren't succeeding at another company would join here and they would start succeeding. Even you, Tammy. Tammy had a rough start. And, and part of it is just how you feel in confidence or happiness or in uh, backed up. And, and it, you can't say it's me, it's her, it's Kenya, it's all of you guys that help support each other. Uh, because of that, we find people start growing here where they were struggling elsewhere um so uh, take that but uh, uh, that means a lot what you do in your personal life does i have a problem of being present is not only in a conversation i can be knee deep in a problem doing things and uh, my brain's talking, thinking about the laundry I didn't get done and the dog needs to be walked and all. And I'm not present in my task. So this is twofold. This isn't just conversations. It shows up well in conversation. Agree? You're not talking much today. 
<laughs> she only talks if she's got a mic, damn it. <laughs> well, something else too, Greg, is the don't wants. I mean, basically what this book is, is law of attraction without talking about it being law of attraction. And if you focus on your don't wants, that's what you're attracting to you. You know, you're spending all of your energy on what you don't want instead of focusing on being present. Absolutely. I But I liked him contrasting the don't wants and the wants. That's what really got me. I don't want to get up at 630 in the morning. I want to hit the snooze alarm to sleep for another 15 minutes. He was doing the don't wants and replacing it with the wants which wasn't necessarily good for him, right? How many times do, okay, Ray's phone just went off, Lynn's phone went off, and I'm not picking on you, but we're all real estate agents. I, I know each one of you has been in a class and you've stepped out to take a phone call or you've stepped out to take a text or you're checking. I'm not saying that that's bad. I do it too, but where do you then draw the line of, I need to focus on myself? The class is boring, so I want to find a reason to step out and take a phone call. Or I can stay in class and return that phone call in 15 minutes. They will wait that long. Hmm? Because then you're paying attention and you haven't missed the point and so on and so forth. So there's back to the want and don't want. I don't want to send out direct mail once a month because that's hard work. I would much rather have a deal that I'm working and go in a house inspection and then, you know, call my mother about why she didn't fix dinner right while I'm at that home inspection. And I doing all that busy work that I want to do. But what I really want that don't want is stopping me from building business and going further. Your don't wants. And so that was when I reached into that and started seeing, especially that part about getting up in the morning. I get up at 6.50 every morning. Yeah, I know. Well, that's him. <laughs> we'll get to that in the discipline section. <laughs> but, but how many times do you want to reach over and hit the snooze? My wife, every night, I love to pick on her, you know. I never hit snooze. I set the alarm for when I'm getting up. I get up. My wife, every time she has to get up early to go to work, she sets an alarm for five. Then she sets a second alarm for 515. And she's doing it through Alexa. And I'm thinking, why do you hit it twice? Why don't you just set it and be done with it? <laughs> you know? But the tendency for most people is, I'm going to snooze a little bit. You got something to say. Well, you know, it it's also a matter of verbiage for me as this kind of clicks for me as it's the have to and the get to, you know, I yep. have to go to work. No, I get to go to work. I have to send out all these direct mails. No, I get to send out these direct mails to communicate with my clients. It's all a matter of perception. It's and, and nothing part, else. And part of that, you're exactly right. Part of it is taking a step up to recognize I have wants and don't wants. And now I'm going to turn those over time into, uh, you know, I get to. Right. Look what I'm achieving. And long-term goals are harder to make. Ding, ding, ding. And that's really too uh, true, too, what Tracy just said. Reframe the way you think about it. You know, um, it, 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 okay, for example... Uh, Kent blew his knee and before it was, I have to get to the gym and now it's, I get to, because for two months he couldn't do that stuff. So just reframing that everything really, if you think about it is an honor, is a privilege, is a good thing that we're able to do it and go into that action with gratitude. Everything changes. I, I don't disagree with you at all, but I am going to throw out there. It's a lot easier when I'm when I get to go to work or I could go to the bar and drink beer and watch the game with my buddies. You know, is it, there's always going to be a level of 
I'm trying to motivate myself and get the verbiage to go that, but there's always going to be something that is more, I just get to relax and have fun. I don't have to do anything. Me, I love real estate. I come to work because I don't want, well, the last couple of months I'd want to sit at home more, but that's a whole different issue. But I love to be here. Julia loves to be here. I can tell. Lynn loves to be here. All of you guys have a different level of where I want to be. Let's see, when you were talking about, oh, I get to go to work or I get to go to the bar and drink and watch, you know, sports. Right. For me, I could never, growing up, I could never do anything I wanted to do until my chores were done. So, yes, I get to go to work, but afterwards, I get to go home and drink. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, yay, uh, or whatever. Or I, I get to to fix this, you know, meal, or I get to do this because I've gotten to do that, but my chores are done. And granted, because I'm a freak, just like everybody else, sometimes I take that too far. You can take everything too far. It's a matter of perception and balance. And, you know, he gets to that right here. I highlighted this. When when uh, our, our buddy Nick was saying, come on, give me that secret sauce. Give me that one bullet of, you know, information that's going to cure all my woes. And he says, there is no one secret. No single tip or strategy unless you account on one specific thing. What's that? Your thoughts. Are your thoughts positive? Are your thoughts leading to you to where you really want to be? I have to do this versus I get to do this. That reframing of your thoughts is what takes you to another level. I, I, I'm doing like boatloads of therapy, thousands of dollars worth of therapy. <laughs> and one thing she's taught me that I really like and in, in applying it is both and <clears throat> is what both and so instead of wants and don't wants it's both and so we're talking uh, about reframing the way we think do the you know you don't want do those first then it's the both and you know it's tracy's real life way of putting it is i get my chores done first right so reframing the way you look at i will do the laundry and then I get to go out with my friends or whatever, but it's both and reframe the way you are thinking to not this, not that, or, but get rid of, but, but <laughs> get rid of, but it's both. And on, on a, a slight side note, uh, I was having a conversation with one of our agents last night and we kind of decided that we need group therapy in the office where we have a therapist that gets a group discount that, you know, you know, we, it, <laughs> we all need, but leading to the next one is, is a chapter on discipline and i like what you said because you got your chores first then you got this he's talking all the way through this discipline um i have to discipline is a muscle discipline is something you practice and it gets stronger and easier as you go Tuli and I, well, we used to play soccer. I probably fall on my butt now more than anything. Um, but we didn't start out with the ball on day one and be good. We had to practice and we had to play and we had to be in games and we had to practice and we had to build our muscles and so on. You don't start off on day one doing, the, uh, doing a full regiment of everything. You have to build up to it. Discipline's the same that way. Pick something easy. I'm not going to hit the snooze alarm this week. I like the example he said. Put Switch your watch from wrist to wrist just because it's uncomfortable. But if you get used to it and you start seeing it, you've disciplined yourself. Take a different route to work. Don't go this way. Go the other way. And every day make it a conscious, disciplined effort. You know, the example they started with is one guy dressed like me, the bad guy, <laughs> and the good guy always had creases in his pants and so on and so forth. Now, Ray worked at Boeing for years. I bet you wore a suit and tie most days. 
Now, the world changes. I recognize it. But are you dressing up? Are you suiting up for the game every day you come into real estate? Are you getting up in the morning? Are you staying in bed? Are you sending out your postcard? Are you switching your watch from one side to another? Start working on building that discipline muscle. And when you get one working, then start on a second one and get it working. And then you'll find that discipline builds up after a while. Every morning I get here around 8.30, 8.35. I check my email. I look at the uh, QuickBooks, see if we got any cash. I look at Facebook to see what other agents have remarked and so on. I check out the last email I sent out, and this is a routine that I do in the morning. What's your routine, or do you even have a routine? Well, and that's exactly where I was going to go with it, is your discipline is your routine. You know, it, it can start out as simple as... You open a drawer at home, you pull out the scissors, you use the scissors, then you put the scissors back in the drawer. <laughs> I mean, it's it can start out that simple, but it's that it takes you five seconds to put those scissors back as opposed to the 10 minutes you'll spend looking for them. It's, it's a simple routine. It's that discipline that begins with one small event and then it can grow so, so let's take it from you know the tiniest littlest one to the biggest one how many of you guys come into the office and say i'm going to do the easy stuff first because i'll have time later in the day to do the hard stuff how many say i've got hard stuff to do but you know i could really make a phone call to the title company to see what's going on right now <laughs> Or I could call the bank because I got to talk to them today. That's the easy one, but then I'll work on marketing later. That's the hard one. Sometimes putting your hard stuff in the morning is the best thing you can do, which is why I check QuickBooks every morning to see how the cash flow is going. That's hard for me because I already know what it is. <laughs> hmm? Eat the frog first. I love that. That's a good one. <laughs> Mm. so did you read the story about him wanting to buy a car he started out sending an email every week here's what i've done this is what i've done so on because it was easy and almost fun and by week three or four it was less fun because he saw that getting the car wasn't going to happen next week it was going to be a long ways out there and then he quit sending the emails all together how many people have done business planning with me? <laughs> and yeah, oh, if that long, why? It's hard. You've lost your dis and it's not as fun. It's more fun to call a lender and find out how your loan's doing. Really, it is. It's more fun to do that. I get it. But is that going to get you where you want to go? I don't think it's about fun either, Craig. I mean, you know, it's more fun to call the lender. It's easier. It's easier. We are going for the easy stuff. I, good wording. I, I was using fun. I like the word. It's easier. It's easier to call the lender and get a response. And then your brain can go to the next thing that would be easier. And by the time it's done, you forgot to track your contacts today. And after a couple of days of that, oh, well, I'm past it. I can never get caught up again. But that is the nasty snowball effect. Right. That if you put off the things that are a little more difficult, a little more painful, they're not near as fun. Oh, my God, I've got to balance my checkbook. That horrible negativity of I need to balance my checkbook right now, but I'm not going to do it because I don't like it and I don't want to know the answer, continues to loom in the back of your head and drives you down. But remember how good you feel when you took the extra time, you got it done, and then it was off your plate. And you're like, oh, the angels are singing. It's wonderful. You move on. <laughs> but if you tackle the tough stuff first, it's off your shoulders, off your weight. You can move forward. Your mind is clear. 
and then everything else becomes more enjoyable, even when it's a not as fun or easy task. Talk about procrastination. I have became, I've become a master of procrastination. <laughs> I could, I could show you lists of stuff that I always move over to the next day. I've got a list in the back of my calendar that has like 20 things on it that I was supposed to get done last year. So procrastination, it's eat the frog first. And you, and I want to say this too, because a lot of my job is fixing things. It, it amazes me how negative people take a problem. And it the problem then becomes overwhelming and they are paralyzed. They don't do anything. If you don't get back to your business plan for a month, we can fix it. We can get caught up. We can start in a different manner. Don't let your negativity towards that issue overwhelm you because it's all fixable. Cheryl can start working on her 20 things. And I'll bet if you looked on that today and you and you looked down at you'd say, well, those 10 things don't matter anymore. I really only have 10 things anyway. So it's a matter of going through and seeing what you have accomplished and not, but then having the discipline to every Monday, first thing I'm going to do is look at that list so I can decide what I'm going to do the rest of the week to deplete that list. And it may only be one thing, but you've made the decision that this week and by Friday, if you've accomplished that, how much better do you feel? It's all fixable. Um, Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, I love this. Uh, it's just that, well, it's hard. I'm going, it's going to take a lot of work for me to make the kind of money I want to have my car. And the guy says, oh, yeah, that, that four-letter word, work. <laughs> he says, I'm often perplexed by how many people actually let the word work get in the way of what they want since that's what they have to do to get what you want. Again, it's that framing your brain around, you know, getting that whole positive aspect of what you're doing. Anybody got comments on that? To develop the habit of discipline in my schedule, I decided to, the hardest thing I could think of is what I would master and do first. For me, that would be exercising. I would hate to exercise. Now, I can use my excuse right now that my bad back, and then, then I probably will. But I also don't have it as a goal. Yeah, well, you can do this. It's not important to me. If it was important, then that would be the hardest thing. Hmm? There's chair yoga. <laughs> chair yoga. <laughs> That's, it's amazing. Actually, what I'm supposed to do is this, which lets my lower body put all the weight and stretch my spine out. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> well, I, and you got to put all your, I mean, I, I know, but I've got bad wrists too, but there are ways you can do things to overcome those hardest parts. Um, and finding those small things and those hard things are what starts building that muscle over and over. Julio is probably the most disciplined man in this entire office. I've watched his exercise, his calling in the morning. I've watched what time he gets here. I watch him go out to exercise. Um, he comes back, he gets right to work again. If he's got a client coming in, he goes up front to meet them and open the door for them. He walks them out. That's all discipline. <laughs> oh, come on. We all have our strengths. This is Tulio's strength. Don't take it as your... Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we all have our strengths. Absolutely. Tulio's is discipline. Tracy is taking ownership and getting the job done. Don't... She's very creative. And she finds ways to do it rather than just sitting and by and said, 
Greg told me one, two, three, and that's all I'm going to do. No, she doesn't do that. We all have our strengths. So if I were to put you all on the spot, each and every one of you, even including you, what are you going to do between now and next week to change your behavior just a bit? What will you commit to to make a disciplined effort? You want to think about that a couple of minutes? Or somebody want to pop off right away? I'm going to commit to staying until 2.30 every day. <laughs> and, and and what's your consequence if you don't? <laughs> I don't need a consequence. <laughs> well, I'm, That's where I was going. <laughs> to be abused. <laughs> I said, I want to suffer. Well, well, for I'm me, I'm going to commit to my Trello boards. My Trello boards. Trello is a program that it gives you a list of things to do, and so. yes, I have them ninety-five percent done with my systems. Uh, following up with um, new leads all the way to following up a, a year after closing. So I've got that done and now I'm going to start using it. And that's one of the, the first things I do in the morning is my Trello boards. To okay, so Lynn's gonna, done. Lynn's gonna check her Trello board and take action every morning. Who's next? I need a discipline. Doesn't have to be big. You Fine. can change your watch for all I care. You know the procrastination thing. Uh huh. Um, and doing this book, I did this at home in the privacy of my home and <laughs> instead of telling the world. But um, for me, it was meditate. I've been for years and years and years wanting to meditate. And you guys call it what you want. It could be praying. It could just be sitting there for a few minutes and quieting the monkey mind. But I've been meditating again. Um, and it's magic for me, it's magic. And so committing to that and then committing to getting my ass in the office. And I've never had a problem with that in my life. But okay. the last few I years, don't want to commit. How many days are you going to be in the office? How many days? Yeah. How many days in a uh, week? Three well, or four. Oh, no, pick a number. <clears throat> it's not just a matter of <laughs> how often. It is the time of day because what I find is I've been checking out of life and I will sit there and binge YouTube until 10 o'clock in the morning and ah. I'm hiding from life. And so committing to being in the office by nine o'clock every morning, you know, between now and next week, that's, that's all I'm looking for. Well, I'm going to the fair on Thursday and then my, Ken's <laughs> off on Friday. So <laughs> it, it's not a, it's not a, a certain amount of days, but it is a, I'm checking in more than I'm Good. not checking in. Excellent. Okay, who's next? I've got one. Go ahead. Microphone. I'll commit to trying to get to bed earlier because we are up late every night. My wife's a night owl, and therefore I'm a night owl and tend to sleep uh -huh. late sometimes when I shouldn't. So... <laughs> Getting to bed at a decent time. Okay. What is decent? Before 1 a.m. Oh, <laughs> been in bed for 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I see Erica's got her hand up. Sorry, didn't you? Do you want to chime in here on a commitment? Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, I had to bring my friend to her therapy. That's why I couldn't uh, talk earlier. Um, so I would say um, I will commit one of the things and I notice it more uh, like I'm house sitting dog sitting this week. So I'm not at home. And I, I think about all the things that I need to do at my house when, when I'm not staying there. <laughs> and right. so one of the things that I have been trying to get into the habit of doing is like making a list of things that I need to do the next day before I go to bed. Um, like Ray, I'm a big night owl. Like there's times I come in the office at 10 o'clock at night and I'm there till four o'clock in the morning. I'm sure you see those on the security things, <laughs> but um, that's what works better for my, for, for my brain and my schedule. Um, but 
just trying to kind of make a list of things. And if it's a bigger task that can be broken up into smaller parts where I can say at least, you know, commit to saying, okay, let's, if I do at least this, or if I spend at least, you know, X amount of time on it, then I will consider that portion accomplished because sometimes when you have a really big task it's when you're looking at the whole thing and you're feeling overwhelmed um or that I do uh that then you tend to procrastinate and not want to start it at all so even if it's you know cl cleaning you know you're wanting to cl spring clean for your house or have a garage sale it's like okay well what if I take a half an hour and I do this, or I say, I'm going to go through the clothes in this dresser. And once I'm done with that, if I want to continue, I can. And if not, then I will at least say I've accomplished that. But um, doing that as far as my work tasks and saying, you know, okay, how about I call five people, five past customers, or check in with five buyer leads that I have through Op City or whatever it is, but kind of making an actual written checklist. So when I wake up in the morning, I can say, okay, I have to do these things because uh, like Cheryl said, I do go down the YouTube rabbit hole a lot um, because I'm always seeking information. And so I, I find that that is helpful to me when I do that. It's just that I haven't been consistent with it, but I think about it more when I'm not actually at my house. Okay. Um, Erica, let me, let me play back to you what I heard at night. You're going to make a to to do list for the following day, business related, mostly yep. for the next week. Does that sound right? Yep. Okay. That's a good, you know, again, I'm looking for a solid goal, not something that Oh, I'm just going to, you know, so yeah, I can tell if I've made a list every day or not. Okay. Yep. You can tell, or Lynn can tell if she's checked tr Trillo every day. Cheryl will know if she's in the office because we'll see her. Ray, I'm not going to call you at 1.30 in the morning and see if you're, oh. but. <laughs> Julio, do you, do you have a commitment? It doesn't have to be hard. Normally, I start when the day end because when the day end for me, I'm going to the gym mm -hmm. to relax. For me, go to the gym for relax, to do exercise for hour and a half. I say, my wife say, you are too old to go this. I need to do <laughs> exercise. I need to do relax. I need to be good for the next day. That's right. And uh, I like that. Normally, I wake up at uh, six in the morning every day, weekends too. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> for me, it's normal. I don't, I don't like uh, spend the the bed too much time. And uh, when I come here to the office, I have all planning in my head. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't like to write too many things just in my head okay start to do this i start to call some people i but, need to start to call the last customers but that's discipline that you've built over years yeah and that's you know lynn won't need so much stuff on her trello list as she starts developing those discipline routines so. this is this is the thing my my planner is here yeah that's fine <laughs> Yeah, this is right now. I start to write some things because in this age, we start <laughs> to forget some things. I say, Oh, I need to do this right now. But this is the thing. This is okay, Tammy. You're up. Give, give her the microphone. I have been trying to be here by nine o'clock at least three or four days um, a week. And change my mind set to see myself successful and and think about myself being successful rather than going to dark places in my mind and uh, giving up when things don't go my way <laughs> so so i think you and cheryl should be accountability partners because you both said nine o'clock and you both why cheryl didn't say it 
she hasn't been as active as she has been in years past. And I think she's feeling it. You guys ought to meet at the coffee pot every morning at nine and kind of, you know, give give you positive reinforcement back and forth. You got anything you're going to commit to? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well while i was listening to everybody which i'm like that was good that was great that was love it love it love it you know yeah i got one <laughs> what what 230 come on push we'll it talk to three. later push it to three no, I'm gonna... <laughs> and I, i'm sitting here going i gotta come up with something i'm not uh, there's always something we can all work on but I am such an anal creature to begin with that I have I have over, I've got so much structure in my life. Maybe I need to loosen up a little. I, I was going <laughs> to say you might need to let go of one thing. Yes, because I I do I I get that grip of myself. I'm a little hard on myself. Yeah, or a lot <laughs> when I don't get A, B, and C done. I can't do anything else because so maybe i need to lighten up a little about meditate? Well, well i already do like lighten up a little <laughs> is very you know non know. you it's need to pick one specific. item that says you know what i'm gonna let can you worry about this every day and i won't i'm gonna let the doors be locked and i won't worry about it you gotta do pick one thing do you Not have now but right yeah and, do you schedule yeah, family either. time do I? Do, do you schedule family time? No. Family's important. Family time isn't always a positive. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did too. Um, <laughs> Most of you know, you'll, you'll pick know. something. I'll figure something. I, I have a real one for me. April, you got a commitment you want to make to next week? You're muted. April, are you playing hooky? I, I'm trying to get my phone to work. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think my commitment is just I, I, I think I become so overwhelmed in my mind with all the things I should be doing that I don't have a clear path, and so I need to be more disciplined and to kind of like Erica, just one thing and tackle it, and then go on to the next. You committed to me to come in Thursday so that we could sit down and do a one-on-one, -on -one, remember? I am committed Ooh. to be Thursday. I might have to walk, but <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> I bet we can figure out a way to get you here. <laughs> okay, well, so you've committed to meet one-on-one -on -one with Lynn to help guide you to that one thing. How's that sound? Yeah, I'm just very overwhelmed. Yeah, just so yeah. I need to just dive in. And I think just with all the things that, encompasses that there's you just start getting foggy very quickly with all of the sure. things hey i'm going to rat you out you committed to two things to me this morning you committed to coming up with 50 names of people that you should know teachers doctors whatever and you also committed to making a list of everything that you need to, you feel like you need to accomplish so that when we do get together we can prioritize and, and help you set up a system for that top thing, right? Yeah, I already have a list of all the things. That's why I'm so overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, well, then then that's what we're going to do on Thursday is, is decide pr to prioritize so I can help you on that. There you go. And you can have a list like Cheryl of 20 things last year. So I'm going to give you mine now. Uh, and it's going to sound a little strange to some of you. Some of you know, when I come in in the morning... For the last couple of years, I've been listening to a Christian channel, which is okay, except this morning I had my wife's car, and when I came in, I was singing along and all this other stuff, and when I'm listening to the Christian channel, I'm thinking of all the things I've done bad for the last few days because my mind wanders all over. I'm not really listening. So I'm going to start listening to music and singing along in the morning so that I come in a little bit happier, cheerful ready to tackle the world i i know it sounds silly but i was listening i would you know linda ronstadt and jim croce and america and i was just singing every one of them and so there it's not 
it's not silly at all because I just found myself recently singing along and dancing like I used to just abandoning myself and start to dance when the song comes on and for quite some time I'd been in that dark space where I didn't feel the music and now I'm starting to feel it again so yes go do it <laughs> turn it up loud <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we, we all have our commitments. I'm going to quit recording. Erica, have a question again? Yeah, I don't know. Nope. That was just still up from earlier. I just forgot to turn it off. Nah. Uh...